but so so going forward um, yeah. in this situation that you're in now, and the projects that you're kind of working on at the moment to drive and roll out, obviously you've you've said the difficulties that you have with regards to, to not being able to interact with the people so well. So, so how, how are you using technology? How, how are you dealing with those problems at this moment in time to, to overcome them? Because obviously you can't sell, yeah. we can't do it now. So. It, exactly. We can't stand still and, uh, and, and, and not do anything. So, yeah. I mean, there are the, the, there's kind of two aspects to it. One yeah. is the, the human aspect and the other is the, the, the technology aspect. I think from a technology perspective, the benefit of being a, uh, you know, working in a telecommunications company is that obviously you know, we have uh, lots of uh, you know, network and bandwidth and tools and network professionals. So the, the practicalities of being able to have meetings with anyone across Europe or suppliers in the States has, has, has not, be, not really been an issue for, for anyone within, within Liberty Global. I mean, thanks in no small part to some fairly superhuman efforts of some of the, the, the network and workplace yeah. engineers early on. But, but the the kind of the practical aspects are because we work in, in so many different uh, in so many different entities in so many different uh, countries a lot of what we did anyway was over webex or over teleconferencing mm -hmm. even before the, the the pandemic hit us so yeah. but so that's not been a, a really an issue but the, the change for me has been absolutely in what I, what I mentioned earlier about the, that human to human interaction and how yeah. do you replace uh, if, if you're having kind of transactional calls, you know, project mm. updates like that, absolutely, absolutely fine. To get everyone uh, to Zoom and it's all okay. And, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. we, we, we use WebEx for most of ours and, cool. uh, and Microsoft Teams for some, but you can, you know, as you well know, you can share screens, everyone can see what's happening, they can interject, ask questions. So for those, those kind of transactional meetings, it's absolutely fine. Mm. For the... Uh, I would say the, the, the non-transactional, as I call them, so that when you're, uh, we've been kicking off some fairly major pieces of work and we've had to hold all of the, the kickoff workshops remotely. And yeah. so you've got 20 people on a call that have, in some cases, never met before, um, are all trying to find out a, a, about, the, about the project. Uh, and the key thing for me there has been trying to, to, to work out how to, how to read the room um, yes. in, when you can't actually, in some cases, even see people because... Mm. We don't mandate that people use um, use video for calls. If they, uh, you know, I, I quite like it. But I see other people, um, yeah. but it's dated. And, and so, when I'm sitting in those sort of calls, you're trying to, you're, I'm trying to multitask. I'm trying to, on the one hand, listen to the questions, listen to the interactions, take the feedback. But on on the other hand, it's almost it's almost listening for what you can't hear. Yeah, that's uh, right. Like kind of the blank spaces, as it were. It, exactly, yeah. uh, and then trying to work out who, who hasn't spoken and, 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 and have they not spoken because uh, everything's been said and they don't feel they need to interject just to say they're there or have they not spoken because they're not agreeing with something. Mm. And so what I tend to find I'm doing is I'm doing a lot more following up as soon as I can after those calls yeah. with one conversations with people, e either just to say, um, yeah, that was great. I thought you did a great presentation there or, um, you yeah, know, noticed you were very quiet there. Just want to check everything's okay. And, uh, uh, and, and both from a just a stand, you know, are people because everyone's dealing differently with 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 lockdown and, and having to work from home. But but trying to recreate those chats that you would have in a lunch break or as you're leaving the room um, by really you know, listening for what you can't hear. I think on the, on those calls, that's that's the, been the, the big change for me uh, because yeah. you can't read body language, you can't see if someone's you know, slumped in their chair or. Um, yeah, shoulders hunched or, or, or yeah, shaking their head vigorously because they disagree with something. So, if, if I what I tend to do is if I haven't heard somebody on a call and I think it's a sort of the sort of session they would normally have been involved in or interacting, get in touch with them straight away afterwards, not via an email but via a, a phone call or via yeah, FaceTime or via something that you mm -hmm. can then check everything's okay, check whether there was something they wanted to say that they didn't. Um, and it's not it's not perfect, but it's try. They're the sort of things that generally trip you up in these change programs, are the things that aren't said. Yeah, and I think that's, um, that's interesting because well, the reason why we're doing this, this series of interviews is, is about leaders, and obviously you're talking about change side, but really that's that's management, isn't it? You know, you, yeah. when you do management, you do a sales kickoff, when you talk for a project, you're you're basically assessing what people's reaction is and have you got everyone on board, and you it's difficult to do that if you can't let like you say read the room yes uh, absolutely you have to 
I, I find I, I'm just telling myself every time I go into one of those sort of meetings is you, you throw your assumptions out the window um, yeah. unless you can unless you you're pretty certain you can tell what someone's feeling what their reaction is from from that call assume you don't know and therefore invest the time to try and find out yeah because that's really interesting it yeah. may be something nothing to do with the project or it may be that they just they disagree with something but they it, it's because they're not in a room because they can't see everyone they feel a bit reticent to to actually say in front of 20 people well i, I don't understand what that is or i disagree with it mm. uh, and so you've really got to work harder to try and then to, to try and get it out afterwards